Welcome to my channel. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know why I always get a frog when I start these things. Um, I've been talking about this and thinking about this for a while. And I may not do this every day. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to create uh, an episode that I'll call... The Dismal Dispatch, the Dismal Daily Dispatch. How's that? Um, it will consist of information that you need to know that is oftentimes discouraging or depressing and very concerning. And so I'm going to try to do one every day. I don't know if I'll get one every day, but I'll try to try to do one every day at least. Um. Uh, <clears throat> at least two or three times a week and, and hopefully every day, but we'll see. But anyway, we'll call it the uh, Dismal Daily Dispatch. How's that? So that's what I'm going to do now. But before I do that, I have to thank you for coming to my channel. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting and for engaging with me. It's just this is beyond my comprehension it's fascinating it's it's thrilling it's exciting it's hard for me to believe but the growth of my channel is just uh, it's blowing my mind it just keeps growing and growing and growing and it's you that's doing that and I appreciate that I really do so today's Dismal Daily Dispatch. Uh, first thing I want to show you is this is a professor at the University of, uh, excuse me, at Cal State University, Los Angeles. This woman is teaching college. <laughs> and uh, she is a professor of Pan-African Studies. Whatever the heck that is. And she tweets, why do I feel like it's slightly racist to be a Taylor Swift fan? <laughs> well, someone responded, literally everything is racist. Now, I can't know for sure, but I kind of think this was satire or irony. This person was making fun of what she said, but her response was, indeed. <laughs> So for her, literally everything is racist. And, and if you think about it for a minute, that's true. For her, everything is racist because she is racist. She's so focused on skin color that she can't see people. We don't need more of these kind of folks. We need less of them. It says according to her bio, she's a professor of Pan-African Studies a Black Lives Matter organizer, a Pan-Africanist, whatever that is, a hip-hop scholar, a daughter of God, a womanist, a truth-teller, a mama. <sighs> Imagine sitting in one of her classes. And then she follows up with this. Why do I feel like this was some right-wing white supremacist conspiracy? The Super Bowl. Last time I checked, Pat Mahomes was black. At least half black. And more than 50% of the team is black. So what does this even mean? <laughs> and then she writes, then she tweets this. Attention, white people. Please don't ask if you can come to the cookout. Juneteenth is Freedom Day for black folks. It should be Reparations Day for white folks. Yeah, because <clears throat> my family, which came to America in the late 1800s from Germany and Sweden, should be held responsible for the slavery that took place in this country before we even arrived. Right? That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Oh, boy, I'm telling you. So, <clears throat> then there's this that I want you to hear. 
This is Matt Taibbi. He is one of the uh, rare breeds of journalists that actually does journalism nowadays, which is not very common anymore. And this is him testifying before the House Subcommittee on the Weaponization of Federal Government. And this is his opening statement. Five minutes. Uh, Chairman, sure. Hit that, hit that, hit Matt, uh, Mr. Tybee, hit that. Um, uh. Chairman Jordan, Ranking Member Plaskett, members of the Select Committee, thank you for having me today. My name is Matt Taibbi. I've been a reporter for 30 years uh, and a staunch advocate of the First Amendment. Much of that time was spent at Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, Ranking member Plaskett, um, I'm not a so-called journalist. Uh, I've won the National Magazine Award, the I.F. Stone Award for Independent Journalism, and I've written 10 books, including four New York York Times bestsellers. (laughs) Uh, I'm now the editor of the online magazine Racket on the independent platform Substack. I'm here today because of a series of events that began late last year when I received a note from a source online. It read, are you interested in doing a deep dive into what censorship and manipulation was going on at Twitter? A week later, the first of what became known as the Twitter files reports came out. To say these attracted intense public interest would be an understatement. My computer looked like a Vegas slot machine uh, as just the first tweet about the blockage of the Hunter Biden laptop story registered 143 million impressions and 30 million engagements. But it wasn't until a week after the first report, after Michael Schellenberger, Barry Weiss, and other researchers joined the search of the files, that we started to grasp the significance of this story. The original promise of the internet was that it might democratize the exchange of information globally. A free internet would overwhelm all attempts to control information flow its very existence a threat to anti-democratic forms of government everywhere. That's what I thought. What we found in the files was a sweeping effort to reverse that promise and use machine learning and other tools to turn the internet into an instrument of censorship and social control. Unfortunately, our own government appears to be playing a lead role. We saw the first hints in communications between Twitter executives before the 2020 election when we read things like flag by DHS or please see attached report from FBI for potential misinformation. This would be attached to an Excel spreadsheet with a long list of names whose accounts were often suspended shortly after. Uh, Again, Ranking Member Plaskett, I would note that the evidence of Twitter government relationship includes lists of tens of thousands of names on both the left and right The people affected include Trump supporters, but also left-leaning sites like Consortium and Truthout, the leftist South American channel Telesur, the Yellow Vest movement. That, in fact, is a key point of the Twitter files, that it's neither a left nor right issue. Now, this is something that I, I don't think enough people understand or realize. <clears throat> when you <clears throat> when you allow government to control the flow of information, if you celebrate it because they're controlling information that you don't want people to have, then you're a fool because all we have to do is change parties and they're going to control the information that you want to be known. You see, when you put too much power into the hands of government, it hurts everyone, regardless of their political affiliation, regardless of their beliefs. And you can see that here. What Matt is telling you is what they found in the Twitter files was not that just conservatives were being silenced. Liberals were being silenced silenced too. That is the danger of putting too much power in the hands of government. And you need to think about that because... 
it may be someone else's ox that's being gored and you're happy about that today but tomorrow it could be your ox that's being gored and I don't think you'll be happy about that at all it's incumbent upon us as American citizens that we fight censorship no matter who it impacted I'm just as upset by people on the left being silenced as I am by people on the right because it's only the open exchange of ideas that ends up in a good uh, good government and a good constitutional republic. I almost said democracy. I'm not going to do that because we are not a democracy. We are a constitutional republic. But my point is put control of information in the hands of government and it's detrimental to every single citizen regardless of their beliefs, regardless of their politics, regardless of their desires. It's a bad thing for all of us. We simply should not allow it. It shouldn't be allowed under any circumstances by anyone, Republican or Democrat or Independent or whatever. It's a bad idea and it should be killed in its infancy. And of course, it's not in its infancy now. It's a full-blown, massive organization designed to silence us and to control us. And it's not just in America. It's all over the world. <sighs> I hate telling these stories, but they need to be told. So... That's my dismal daily news for today. I pray for you. I pray that you'll have an abundant life and that you'll be healthy and you'll live a long time. I pray that you'll be kept safe by God. I pray the same for every person that you love. And I pray that you will be anxious for nothing but in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, You'll make your request known to God, and the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Vietnam Era Vet out.